say that everybody in the world has someone somewhere who looks like they do. It was my bad luck that the man who looked like me was an American scientist working on some scheme to produce cheap electricity by a thing called fusion. His name was Dr. Daniel Hitler. He was an idiot. Not now, Miss Fleming. The girl is with the Central Intelligence Agency. More of her later. And the smooth-talking double-crosser down there is Hitler's partner, Sir John Bavistock. Now that Fleischmann and Pond's U.S. research into cold fusion has been widely rejected... Yes, yes, my dear, but our efforts are taking a rather more sophisticated route. I suppose it's all rather technical, I'm afraid, dear girl. I have a doctorate in Yay! physics from Caltech. So... Yay! Hey, where's he going? Sir John. It works! It works! Are you sure? You bet your ass. Let's have some champagne. Would you don't drink? <laughs> I name you license to print money. <laughs> no one else knows. No one. What do you reckon the secret of an endless supply of clean, cheap energy is worth on the open market? Money! Money! Is this a breakthrough? The experiment was a complete failure. I'm afraid it's back to the drawing board. You ever try that position? I'm contemplating suicide. Or perhaps becoming a member of parliament. No suicide. Now, while these two were overcome by their own genius, I was a few miles away, detained as a guest of Her Majesty. That means I was in prison. That's me, Sidney Lipton. Hey! One more bullseye and I'm the champion, right? Grab it. was a complete failure. Yeah, Sid, there's a bloke on TV, looks just like you. Mind you, he ain't got that silly nose of yours. Don't call me when I'm at work. I've got to beat old one arm. It's time, Lipton. Get a free man. Uh, five seconds, sir, please. You know the rules. Get a free man. Can't have you associating with these criminals. <laughs> Pick up some bad habits. <laughs> All right, then. Cheerio, lad. All the best. Bye-bye. I won, then. Be lucky, Sidney. That'll be the day. Hey, wait a minute! While I'm starting my new life, a man who was part of my old life is about to pull one of his little zingers. Good morning, sir. I'll see you inside, Senator. Muffin and I can find our own way in. Unload the car, would you? Come on, Muff. Here he comes, dressed to kill. A cheap crook called Gerald Bradley Scott. You sure he's rich? He's an American politician. He's rich. Drive to him, they're onto us. <laughs> Poor old Rodney. I hate to do this to him. Ronald, whoever. See what I mean? That's typical Gerald. Good God, dirty sod. Dear, dear. Here you are, Tim. This is your share, and you're an art lover. Look out! <laughs> Absolutely appalling. You. I'll never use your son again. Show your duty. I'll start you. Who's my son? 
See the lady in black? Gerald and me shared an apartment with her when we were young. She's the last character in our story. Her name is Willie. He had a good innings, Mrs. Metcalf. Yes. After all, when I married you five years ago, the doctor said he had only six months to live. I should have asked for a second opinion. I, Tertius Metcalf, leave my entire estate to the woman whose love and devotion has meant so much to me during my years of ill health, Miss Donna Dulch. You've got 28 days to get out of the house, Mrs. Metcalf. You're most considerate. was a visit from the smart one of our old game. Why is she here? Sydney! Willie? Sydney, you don't look happy. I come from a broken home. Get him. Put the pictures at the back. Careful with that. I thought you said 28 days. With the house, darling, not the content. My late husband's girlfriend. What's she got that you haven't? Everything. Hope she didn't take the bath and smell of prison. This takes me back. 1967, wasn't it? The summer of peace and love. I was selling dry bananas to suckers as prime pot. Whatever I wanted a bath then, that selfish sod Gerald had taken all the hot water. Well, he's mellowed with age. His salt don't mellow, they rot. That'll be our first guest. Well, I think these clothes will fit you. You're about the same build as Tertius. Thanks. Of course, he was a hunchback. Sydney, guess who's here? Hello, Sid. You! You remember Chief Inspector Gross? No hard feelings, eh, Sid? No hard feelings? You put me away for three years. Had to, Sid. Someone ratted on you. Ratted? Nobody knew about that heist except me and Gerald. Of course, it was Gerald. Inspector Gross was part of our team. Cheers. Cheers. Might not have been Gerald. We picked him up for unpaid parking tickets, and uh, <clears throat> he sang like Madonna. What a perfect Will hostess. Will you look right Really? Sydney, it's been so long. Three oh, years! Bastard! No, 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 Sydney, Sid, they tortured me. They threatened to the burn my dog's eye. You don't have a glass of ice. Yeah, we'll see how cruel they were. Now yeah. we've all arrived, and let's get down to business. Oh, oh, what business? Things are tough, Sydney. I'm broke. Widowed and being thrown out of my home. I need my real friends. Then why is Gerald here? Because I want you two to do a job. I'm not working with that double crosser. He's put so many partners in jail, they've named a wing after him. You're no master criminal yourself. Yeah, well, the closest you'll ever get to a brainstorm is a drizzle. <laughs> Very funny. There's a million pounds at stake, Sydney. The experiment was a complete failure. I'm contemplating suicide. I'm afraid it's back to the drawing board. Sir John Bavisak and Dr. Daniel Hickler, two government scientists on the take. They've got a safety deposit box at Lacey's full of uncut diamonds. And no way are they going to squeal if you uh, help yourselves. Lacey's? That's a shop, isn't it? Yeah, they opened a safety deposit vault there two years ago. You were away. You really think we look the same? You sure do. I'll bankroll the preparations. All the research is in here. Hickler's got blue eyes. I haven't. My one's quite handsome. You'll never look like him then. Here. My one's got a funny nose. You're the one with a funny nose. Plastic surgery. Plastic explosives. I'm out. 
A million pounds each, Sydney. Half a million a nostril. Think about it, Sydney. Goodbye, old friend. <laughs> <laughs> opens your box, this code opens the security door. Then you simply insert your key letter. Uh, then you can take your box in there. If there's anything else you require, Mrs. Metcalf. Uh... Good afternoon, Henry. Five o'clock as usual, gentlemen. Yes. How's the wife's leg, Henry? It's a long, slow job, Sir John, I'm afraid. Take away somewhere warm. Barbados. On my take home pay, 93 pounds a week. Save up, Henry. Save up. Oh. Oh, hello, me. Aren't you Sir John Babistock? Yes, I am. You're Dr. Hickler. Yeah. I saw you on TV. I think you're both so brilliant. You're trying to create cheap energy for all of mankind. I'm so sorry that you failed. My daughter thinks you're both so handsome. Would you mind signing this for her? <laughs> Only if you promise to have lunch with me next week. Lunch with both of you? Oh, you're so kind. Well, I don't know if Dr. Hickler can manage lunch. I certainly can. <gasps> So keep practicing their signatures. Look, you tap in a six-figure code to make the box come out. Have you fingered out the code? Your American accent's coming along, Sydney. You sound like Bugs Bunny. Babstock's code's no problem, but Hickler is masking the keyboard. Gross figures the last digit has to be three, six, or nine. If you go wrong more than twice, the alarms ring. Otherwise, you open the box itself with a key. Who gets the keys? You do. Next week, while I'm having lunch with them, they only come up from their lab one day a week. They go to the vault exactly at 5 o'clock. Oh, and they go to their private clubs and fitness clubs. They're health freaks. Wow. I keep in shape. Only it's in rotten shape. Stop bickering and do your homework. What do you think they do with all the bits they cut off? Well, they join them all together. And they make Michael Jackson. Who's Michael Jackson? Now I ask you, is this a job for a man just out of hospital? I'm off to Sir John Babistock's apartment to get the key to his deposit box. Willie has the easy part. She's having lunch with Babistock and Hickler to make sure they're not home. Oh. Gerald, he loves dressing up. This is his idea of how to get Hickler's key. Yes? You are Dr. Hickler. I am the piano tuner. I'm his sister. Dan's out to lunch. Did he take the piano with him? <laughs> oh, I don't believe him. Oi, mate! Yo! The captain wants you back at the depot. He knows about you and his secretary. Bloody hell. <laughs> Please, I cannot work with someone in the room. You, you can't see me. I have an acute sense of shame.
care for a drink? Do you have any mineral water? Yes. Hot tea? Yes. Coffee? Yes. Caffeinated? Of course. I need caffeine. I'll dash out to the store. No. Oh, yeah. My dear, you look radiant. Yippee! I didn't think they allowed women in men's clubs. They changed the rules. And today is the first day. Are you there, Cedric? I think someone's trying to come through. I thought Cedric was five feet three. His black hair. What have you been hiding from us, Lily? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Els Peg. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Greetings from the singing window cleaner, O Graham. <laughs> Who's Elspeth? This new world seems very popular. <laughs> Last week, there were only three chaps here for lunch. <laughs> Two of those couldn't eat salads. Dad. We should be getting back. I have another cup of coffee. This is so interesting here. You shouldn't have caffeine at your age. Go, Please, let's put it. What are you doing in here? I am looking for the other piano. There isn't one. Are you sure, Liz? What is that down there? What is what? The tape recorder. Oh, that? That is my reference tape. Where did you learn piano tuning? Salzburg. Under Mozart. No, I started at the church where he was buried. Mozart was under me. <laughs> That's Dan's favorite thing in the whole world. My I'll go get a brush. Ow! I found Dr. Hickler very attractive. What's he got that I haven't? Brains, money, and uh, sex appeal. Sydney, I think I know how you can get your key. Blow the dog's brains out with a sawn off shotgun. Uh -huh. Nothing quite so drastic. I hope this works. Trust me. Share with your sisters. Come on. <laughs> it's like leading Rob Lowe around on the leash, isn't it, Sydney? Come on. Off you go. Stand back. There's going to be a lot of fur flying. She doesn't fancy you. It's like married life. Uh oh, she's changed her mind. 
Yep. I think they'll do all right, those two. Does all that on dog biscuits. Makes you wonder what Rottweiler means in English, doesn't it? Can you remember when you could do it six times in an afternoon? I can cast my mind back three weeks, Sydney. Yes. Here, look at that. He's getting quite fond of her, isn't he? Very romantic, Sydney. You should try dog biscuits. I've tried them, they don't work. You're doing very well, dear. He'll sleep like a log after this lot. It'll be all right if he doesn't dream. There he goes. I think he's getting tired now, look. I think he's asleep. I hope he is, for your sake. Unbelievable, you have to give six dogs ecstasy to get one key. Well, I must get to my tailor. was a complete failure. Sir John. I'm uh, contemplating suicide. Do you uh, really think you could convince someone who knows Hitler? Piece of cake. 50 pounds says you can't. No point in taking silly risks. Scared? You want to show off? Try Sir John's help club. The address is in there. You're on. Going. For a workout. Good afternoon. Uh, Sir John Baverstock. Nice to see you, Sir John. Not your regular day. I like to keep my hand in. Your usual? Yes, why not? Pamela, Pamela for Sir, Sir John. John. Johnny, darling. Twice in one week. You stud. Hello, David, the usual. It's Dr. Reagan. What took you so long? It was unbelievable. We changed names at half time. What? It's not a health club. It's a brothel. Excuse me. Sydney. A bet's a bet. He's been to Babistock's club. I'm going to Hickler's. It's a matter of honor. He's right. Who is it? Dr. Daniel Hickler. Danny, you've put on weight, you naughty boy. Yes, I have. I'll need a double session. You sure you can handle it? Sure. Evelyn for Dr. Hickler. Did you let Sydney go out the night before the scam? Give him a break, will he? He hasn't had a woman in three years. Has he? How should I know? <laughs> Dirty old man.
listen, you guys. They leave the club at 4.15, take the rover to Lacey's. They're always there at 5 sharp, so you must be there earlier. Good luck. Sydney, why don't we see where the young ladies are going to? We shouldn't do this. Not the night of the robbery. Good evening, Sandy. Uh, two large GNTs, please. Ice in the slime? Yeah. Hello, ladies. May I buy nuclear physics? What? I was just reading your chest. You're a scientist. Sir John, they said you wouldn't be back from the laboratory in time. Blimey, the girls thought we were real scientists. And then, who turns up to the convention? The real Hitler and yeah. Babstock. Five hours in the lab. Not bad. Keep the chain. I'm fed up with these scientific meetings. Jean T, ice and slice twice. Dr. Hitler, he didn't drink. He doesn't. They're both for me. Barman? Yes? Where's Dr. Hitler's carrot juice? And whatever the ladies require. Two white wine spritzers, please. Cheers. Gerald. Something wrong with your neck? Good evening. Good. We missed the dinner. Still time to impress the science groupies. Let's wash our hands. Listen, Gerald, we can't stay here. The place is crawling with physicists. Those girls will figure us out. Well, at least let me get our phone number. Ah, there you are. Perhaps it's locked. I've got a bone to pick with you. Oh. Not now, uh, Chesterton. I tried to reproduce that experiment of yours in last month's Scientific American, where you said you passed a high voltage through a vanadium electrode. So. Yeah. It blew the roof off my freaking garage. Well, maybe you didn't understand the article. And maybe your future program is horse shit. Maybe you are a bloody... Fred, for heaven's sake, will you stop them? Oh, I stop this. Quiet supper at the club? Yep. All right, all right, come on, break it up. Terrible. Well, that Willie, she's still out, so I left a message on the answer machine. Sid, when, uh, when you and me and Willie shared that, uh, well, did you and Willie ever, uh... Never. Did you? Certainly not. Liar. Liar. Here, take a card. God. You and your card tricks. Eight of diamonds. And it's in the toilet. Oh, Do you mind if I pick up my messages first? Okay. Someone wants to pay your bail. It's just not like my brother. Okay? Sure. Who are you? Uh, <laughs> don't you recognize your sister? <laughs> you must forgive me for suffering from shock. I'm here to stand bail for Sir John Babistock and Dr. Hickler. I'm Dr. Hickler's sister. The hell you are! Uh, what she means is she is my sister. She's so confused. Aren't you, Willie? Yes. I've come to bail out my scientists. And who are you, sir? Not you, sir. Sir Hugh, sir. Sir Hugh Corrie, Her Majesty's Chief Scientific Advisor. Do you realize the shame you're reflecting on the whole British scientific establishment? How could you hit Professor Chesterton? I had to, sir. He called you a pompous, ignorant old has-been. Baby star, Hitler, look. No hard feelings. I'll pay you fine. Oh, huh? really? Pompous, ignorant uh, old has-been, okay. eh? Well, let me huh? tell you, Professor Chesterton, as far as your anchor go. grant is concerned, you can forget it! Come on, sir. I've called you a minicab. Is that it? The tether car is a Rolls Royce. Where to? Lasers! Where's that? <laughs> we'll direct you. Here, mate, you're famous. You seen this? We're dead. Uh, turn right. <laughs> He's crazy. You're not telling me. There's no problem. I'll drive. What a way not to get to a robbery. 
In the meantime, Babistock and Hickler are leaving their club to go to the vault. Our last trip. Before the real fun starts. Willie had a little surprise ready. Trust her to take care of things. Jesus H. Christ! You stupid bloody woman! Hi! You! It's her. Good God. Oh! Did you see that? Can he hit me? All right, oh. what's the fuss? This man hit that poor woman. Oh, this is absolutely unbelievable. Do you know who I am? If we don't get there by five o'clock, we'll bump into Babistock and Hitler in the vault. <gasps> soft and hard cheese. Sir, can I press you to something soft? Why not? We'll have the cheese after. Laces will be closing in 15 minutes. Please complete your purchases. Afternoon, James. Let you out, did they? Uh, case of mistaken identity. How's the wife's legs, then? Different guard, you idiot. All guards' wives have legs. Excuse me, gentlemen. He made me do it. Bastard. The store is closed for a special visitor. If you mind coming this way. Just our luck that the day we picked to rob the vault, the Queen of England decides to nip out for a bit of shopping. What's she doing here? Taxi! We've made it just in time. There's the real Babistock and Hitler arriving. Are they in for a surprise? We're late, Sir John. I hope they let us in. What the hell? What the hell? What are you guys saying? You're going to Do you know who the hell we are? Yes, two thieving traitors. It's possible he's unto us. This takes me back. King's Road, 1967, right? Fair walls, no curtains. Real cockroaches, too. Weren't we so unhappy then? Sure we were. Now we're happy. We have three million pounds worth of diamonds. What's that? It must be the neighbors. Yeah, and 15 police cars, seven vicious dogs, and 20 police marksmen. I don't think we should open the other box. He made me do it. 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 How come half the police of London ganged up on us? Well, little did we know that the security of our great nation needed crooks like us to help out. You double platinum bastard! What's going on here? Come on, sir. <coughs> this is Daryl Hyde of the Central Intelligence Agency and Nigel Holden of MI5. 
We're thieves, not spies. Thank you, Sydney. There goes our not guilty plea. Our two governments sunk half a billion into Hitler and Bavistock's fusion project. At last, they made a breakthrough. Congratulations. Unfortunately, they've decided to go freelance. They're auctioning the secret of endless cheap energy to the highest bidder. Six foreign powers have paid the three million pounds deposit. Which you stole this afternoon. We're holding the scientists, so we need you to continue your brilliant impersonation. You mean we've been set up? I'm sorry I'm late. I went to the Natural History Museum. You? We recruited Miss Fleming at Harvard and planted her in Hickler's lab. Then how come she doesn't know the formula? Hickler did the final work in secret. He didn't trust anybody. With you lot, he was bloody right. The auctions are set to take place on the Orient Express. I've been to the Orient. This is a rather lovely tour of the stately homes, ending up in Scotland. I can't go. I suffer from motion sickness. Even these make me feel wobbly. Well, I'm a card-carrying coward. Anyway, how will us selling false plans help you get the real ones back? It'll con the successful buyer out of a few million dollars. And after building a factory based on these plans, they'll end up with a very expensive batch of chocolate pudding. While you impersonate them on the train, we'll persuade Bavistock and Hickler to tell us where the real plans are. Hmm. It won't be easy, though. Bavistock was a major in the Royal Marines. We've got to find where they put their computer disk with the fusion plans on it. Miss Fleming here will go with you. She's our protection? <laughs> Might as well shoot us now. What about the diamonds? Yeah. Pull this off, you get to keep them. Are you in? Okay. okay. I, I suppose, suppose so. so. Be nasty for you back in jail, Gerald. With all the partners you've let down. What time's the train leave? Welcome to the Orange Express tour of the stately homes. Terminating at Inverary, Scotland. The train... You and Flo look pretty good pretending to be mother and daughter. I still don't know why you've come, though. Well, I got you into this. The least I can do is hold your hand. And she'll be in contact with the cops at all times. Oh, yeah. Constantly. Sydney! Hey, Sydney! Sydney, it's me, Alf. We shared a prison cell. I think you made a mistake, mister. My name is Hickler. Dr. Daniel Hickler. But I owe you 20 quid, Sid boy. I'll take that. You don't know me. Geez, maybe you're right. Love the new nose, Sid. The accent stinks. I'm dead. Are you kidding? You just did an excellent job of undercover work. <laughs> So, off we went to mislead foreign powers by selling them false plans, while those idiots in the security service try and get the real ones from Hitler and Bavistock. This was not my normal game. I needed a drink. I'll have a Sawazdi Swizzle drink. Sydney, Hitler does not drink. He doesn't drink, he doesn't go with women. What the hell does he need money for? Easy. Yeah, that's my drink. He'll blow the whole mission if he doesn't shape up. <laughs> Just look at him. Let's get ready for dinner. Waiter, I have a virgin's blush now. Are you qualified to join me, young lady? No <laughs> way! Hey! <laughs> Hello! Sit down, Sydney. Hey! Hey! <laughs> you are not meant to know them. I often wave at strange women. <laughs> Well, you may as well have some fun. Meanwhile, the CIA's junior genius, posing as Willie's daughter, is trying to figure out where Bavistock and Hitler hid the real fusion plans. In 15 minutes, we will arrive at Alresford, where dinner will be served at historic Heatherton Hall. Dinner's ready, honey. Well, you're going to work on those papers from Hitler's and Bavistock's deposit boxes all night. Why would you keep a list of shops in a safety deposit box? To remind me when I had money to spend. And all in a village called Maphurst? I don't know you, and I don't want to know you. When you change your mind, I'll be right there, darling. Oh. <laughs> oh. Get you away! Me, really, don't I you? think the agency's made a terrible mistake. You! Go! 
know why it's sending someone gross up. Shut up, Sydney. Take this. Slip it in your ear when you meet your bidders tonight. I'll be able to hear their questions and feed you the answers. I can tell you what to say if you're in trouble. From this? You can hear me, and I, and I can hear you. That's right. Feel okay? Exactly quarter past eight. The coach is waiting to take you to Heatherton Hall. This is when things began to get really nasty. Who should turn up but the man who was meant to be in jail? That crooked two-timing scientist, Dr. Daniel Hickler. Sydney, why aren't you in black tie? Mrs. Metcalf, what a strange coincidence. Just get changed, will you? Get that accent right. Sydney. Sydney, isn't it? You know that list of stores? I checked their credit card statements. They never shopped at any of them. But they did stay at the Roebuck Inn at the same village. Where is Sydney? You're supposed to be running an auction. Ladies and gentlemen, dinner is served. Will you please take your seats? As the seventh Duke of Heatherton, I welcome our friends from across the seas. I hope you'll enjoy our lovely home, as Queen Elizabeth I did before you. You'll never guess who I've got tied up in my cabin. Only you would think about sex at a time like this. I'm not talking about sex, Gerald. I'm going to the womb, Sydney. Is your earpiece in? Yes. Sydney, uh, go to your table, Sydney. I, uh, I... Get on with it, Sydney. Good evening, gentlemen. I use the term loosely. Dr. Hickler, your past abuse. We have a note of your dietary requirements. The wolf man couldn't make it, huh? Cheers. <coughs> the sale will take the form of a blind auction in two parts. My partner, Sir John Baverstock, will conduct the second auction tomorrow. What's happening? He's talking. Well, he's still alive. OK. Let's have your bids, fellas. Dr. Hickler, how can we be sure that your test have positively succeeded in getting the deuterium to fuse inside the palladium lattice? That's a good point. There is between 60... ...and 80% excess heat production using our electrochemical cell with Tacomax and lasers. now helping with their inquiries. The Chinese government announced today that the retraining of those involved... ...involved in the counter-revolution was now complete. Are the Chinese in on this? Six naked men rushed onto the pitch at Wembley today and interrupted Dr. the match Hitler. between... He's talking coat. Please pick up Mrs. Froggett and take her to her aunt, Mrs. J.C. Plant, at Red Rose Cottage. At 1-9 Acacia Drive. Roger. Roger. Roger who? Well, come on, guys. Don't just stare. You want cheap energy here, don't you? I know things are cheap out these, but forget it. A very fair offer. And may I add, that the Islamic Republic of Iran has been grossly misrepresented in the Western media. Just get on with the sale, asshole. Yep. <laughs> you win, handsome. Your government will bid in the final auction. You have your uh, non-returnable deposit. Good. 
Anyone ever tell you you look like Mel Gibson? I'm not surprised. That's him! Pervert. <laughs> Your special rice, Dr. Hickler. I'll resist it. I hope you haven't killed him. It's my twin brother. He's the black sheep of the family. I'll get him back in a cab. Those papers Hickler and Babistock had in the vault. Why a list of shops? Why telephone numbers? Why should Hickler and Sir John go to that village, Naphurst? Let's go find out. My orders are to stay... You don't get to be the director of the CIA by sitting on your butt and following orders. Yes, you do. Uh-uh. Look here, Hickler. Let's do a deal. You've got something worth billions tucked away in a computer disk. Let's say, uh, 40% for me and 10% for Gerald. That still leaves 50% for you and your partner. Of course, these figures aren't fine. Would you drive us to Naphurst? Sorry, it's too far. Who is it? It's Gerald. You okay? I'm fine. See you tomorrow. Keep practicing the accent, Sydney. We'll pay the extra. I told you. We'll pay the extra. Let's go. Follow that car. At this point, Hitler had me rather inconvenienced. Still, I had an idea how to get free. Just as well, seeing that Flo, who was meant to be protecting us, had gone off with Willie to look for the real fusion plans in some village. We've checked the whole village against Hitler and Babistock's notes. All the shops on their list are here, except one. It's not in the phone book either. Maybe the number isn't a phone number. Do you believe a bank in a tiny place like this? Do you think they might have put a little something in here, like the real fusion plans? Excuse me, sir. What time does the bank open? Sometimes it does. Depends on Mr. Robbs' rheumatism. Oh, dear. You better get back to the train. Do you suppose that the name of the shop that we couldn't find is a code? While the girls were hot on the trail of the real fusion plans, who turns up without them knowing it, of course? But the second man we most don't want to see, Sir John Bavistock. Hold on, sheep! Now smile, Elmer. It won't kill you. You're Hello. enjoying yourself. Have you been here long? Did you ever see that bank open? I arrived yesterday. This is our first morning out. Let's go. Come on, Elmer. Let's try over here. What did they say? What? Tell me. What's it goes in the river? Tell them, Elmer! We will not bow to terrorist threat. <laughs> At least let me buy you a drink. For lunch today, we shall be visiting Britain's most famous castle, Whittingham Moat. I think I'll say hello to your dumbass partner before the second auction. Breathing problem, Sydney? We don't want you dead yet. Hi! This was getting too much. Willie and Flo are running around the countryside. Hickley's running around my compartment. Have I got news for Gerald? All right. I've got to catch him before he starts his auction. You'll never believe this. I don't. Actually, you did quite well last night, Sydney. No, not that. You'll have to forgive me, Sydney. My buyers are arriving. I hope they're as ugly as mine. He gets all the luck. Madam, what a pleasure. Hello, Sir John. I must say, your photograph doesn't do you justice. I am starving. Don't worry, Dr. Hickler. We have your order. We order two kosher luncheon. Certainly, sir. Now, if you would all place your bids in my hand. And these cards, 
represent. The furthest you're prepared to go. And now, if you'll watch closely. <laughs> Just my little joke. Smart ass. <laughs> and where might your card be? Don't do it, Gerald. You, sir, have made me an offer I must refuse. Don't take your holidays in Sicily, my friend. As you have both bid 100 million, I'll give you 30 seconds each to improve your offers. Well, my sister would like a signed photo of Princess Di. Would you have her make it up with you, Shania? Do you have your darn thing? They look, um, I trust they're genuine. I have a jeweler's eyeglass on the train. Gerald, I have to talk to you. Not now, Sydney. This one's for England. Nice, isn't it? He gets Kim Bassinger, I get Nightmare on Elm Street. It's open, darling! Why don't you take your clothes off, get in the shower with me and see if you can tell the difference between this and soap on a rope? Easy. Soap on a rope's useful. What? This is Hickler's gun. He's on the train. I've been trying to tell you for days. Oh, I don't think you know Dan Hickler, my darling. Hello. It's my pleasure. Oh, my. It was nearly mine. Make yourself comfortable, my dear. Something's come up. That's funny. Oh, not again. I'm telling you, Hitler is on this train. He's escaped. What have you told the girls? I haven't seen them lately, but we're in deadly danger. You're in deadly danger. Baverstock has not escaped. You think you're so hard, don't you? I'll let Francesca be the judge of that. Are you okay? Yeah. I made it. I'm in better shape than you. What happened to your nose? Your face rejected? Let's go and get some coffee. Fine. I'll just freshen up a bit. Where have you been? You know that list of stores you took from Hickler's box? Yeah, what about it? Where have you been? Nappers. I think we're on to something. Where's Flug? She's having coffee with Sue. Sydney? Sydney! Willie reckons the shop that doesn't exist is the bank code. You know, taking a letter for a number. Like A is one, B is two. I could kill for another cup of coffee. Yeah, me too. Are you all right, Sydney? Oh, come here. Let her go, Hickler. Go fuck yourself, Limey. Oh, very scientific American. Please, Bob! Oh. Ah, once more, you dox me! Why didn't you shoot him? Ricochets. If the agency lets people escape, there's usually a reason. All I wanted was a comfortable retirement. But you had Hitler locked up. So he escaped. We weren't guarding him. The British loused up. What else is new? Don't worry. I'm coming to your next railway station with extra men. Just hold the fort till I get there. The agency's sending more men. Would you be wanting any tea, gentlemen? Hot. What did they say? May I join you? 
Don't you find me strangely attractive? Deep sea fishermen throw back better looking fish. Oh. But luckily for you, I'm a nymphomaniac. Mm -hmm. You'd think that with all this classy luggage, they'd heat the place, wouldn't you? I can't remember when I've been so cold. What about that cabin in Aspen when we were trapped? Okay, Willie. What's going on? We figured that we know where the real plans are. We just need one of you to phone the bank and tell them that your daughter is coming to pick them up. Screw the plans. I thought you and CIA Junior here had only just met. What's with this Aspen experience? I'll rent a car for us at the next stop. Okay. I've been meaning to tell you. Well, we're waiting. Flo really is my daughter. What? How old is she? 22. True. So that means she was born in 1968. The summer of peace and love. When we lived together. Why, Why did, did you, you tell, tell me, me I had a kid? kid? How could you? With him? I was young and I was in love. Who with the most? I'm not sure. I fixed a car for us, Willie. If Sydney calls the bank as Hickler, we can get inside. It's the moment of truth. You can say that again. Blimey. I started out a thief, then I became a secret agent. Now I might be a father. Nice looking girl, too. We shall soon be arriving at Medstead. May we please ask all passengers not to leave the train? We apologize for this inconvenience. Please stay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Have a nice day. Mr. Hobbs at the bank is looking forward to meeting Mrs. Hickler and her lovely daughter. Here are your authentically signed letters of authorization. You're CIA too, aren't you, Willie? You suckered us into this. I'm just doing what any mother would, helping her daughter get ahead in work. This is Medstead. Would guests please remain on the train? Here, just a minute. I'm Sidney Lipton. Hitler's in the guards' van. He's holding the others hostage. Good work, Sidney. Let's go get him. This is it, Hickler. CIA. Hang on, mate. I'm Sidney Lipton. Why don't you admit you screwed up? Against company policy. Open up! I want you out of there now. You two, get back. Come on, men. Open it. I meant open it. I didn't mean... Ah, oh, forget it. Oh, it was wonderful. I felt the earth move. Well, Mr. Hyde. It was nice knowing you. And if you're ever in London, please ignore us. you still got to carry out the final auction in Scotland. You're kidding. Oh, look on it as a small step for mankind. And a lot of cash for us. Like the jewels we collected at the dinners. Keep them. You know, Sydney, we do have a patriotic duty. The two successful bidders will be attending with their controllers. We'll tell you the exact location when you get to Scotland. I've got a hundred men up there. You'll be totally safe. Have you ever driven a Jaguar before? Sure. What did they say? Why, Sir John? Why not, Francesca? We never did. Uh... And I was... So looking forward to examining your rubies. I'll be with you in a second. Allow me, sir. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I've heard of losing your head over a woman, but this. It was working fine. Is it me? There's a dead steward in my room. You've got one too. Sir! 
can't have stopped Buster Biscay. We could phone the science museum and leave a message. Excuse me, I have to call the police. There's two dead bodies on board. Make that three dead bodies. Let's go where there's lots of people. The morgue? No. The dining car. Just as we thought it was safe to go back in the dining car, who turns up in the kitchen? Sir John Babistock. It's an honor to have an inspector from the Michelin Guide visit my kitchen. Yes, yes, it must be. Now, what is your piece de resistance to ce soir? <sighs> Lobster in caviar, saffron, and white truffle sauce. Wonderful, wonderful indeed. Your homage al caviar et tout faire blanc, Sir John. Thank you. And for you, Dr. Hitler, cauliflower. I can't do it. I can't keep eating innocent vegetables. I'll take the lobster. Alas, it is all finished. Everyone except you and Rabbi Blum ordered it. Here, have a fork full of mine. <laughs> How bloody juvenile can you get? So, which one's my dad? What? In CIA terms, Mom. Which one did you go undercover with? Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> We're gonna sue over this, you know. I don't blame you, madam. <laughs> your home, your wife, your family. Good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> How clever of you, Sidney, not to take my poison. I tried, but they ran out. No matter. You can drag your friend out for me. Oh, I don't believe this. Hey, waiter. We've been waiting an hour for two kosher luxem pudding. Do you mind, sir? There are sick people on this train. You should have read what it says about shellfish in the Old Testament. You know what lobsters eat. Hey, fella. This is my silver wedding anniversary. Five thousand bucks we paid for this trip. Don't you ignore me. Shut up, you stupid old man. <laughs> I was in the Israeli commandos for 10 years. I don't have to put up with this shit from waiters. And if you think you're getting a tip, forget it. Welcome to Inverary. For those guests who have suffered discomfort, medical help is available. Well done, man. Tomorrow, we shall be going to You totally useless moron. Do you know what happened on there? Just let me die quietly. Not at all. Good luck go. and goodbye. This looks very nice. Follow me, gentlemen. <laughs> You'll feel better in here, Gerald. Hello, chaps. Sorry about your bit of trouble. Agents McCloskey and O'Malley. Don't worry, you're under 24-hour surveillance. You had Hitler under 24-hour surveillance. You had Bavistock under 24-hour surveillance. You couldn't keep your dick under 24-hour surveillance. For security reasons, you'd better stay in the hotel tonight. Oh, and I was going dancing. Tomorrow at 3, you'll conduct the final auction. It's in an unused wing of the castle. Those are the details. Agent Quinn, you take the back of the castle. McCluskey will lead Good the back of the front. Nice here, isn't it? I need some air. I'll bet there's a lovely view. Some of these castles are falling to bits, you know. They're not safe, none of them. Can you still see them? They've just come onto the balcony. Are you still with them? They seem fine. Well, at least the CIA's on the job. The castle will hold up tonight. Don't worry, Sydney. Ah! What was that? Good disguise, Agent Merrill. I can't believe those two bums are still alive. We underestimated them. Well, I won't make it through tomorrow. Hope not, old chap. Did you hear that? They want Gerald and me dead. You're not at your post. Toilet, sir. Kind of difficult. Stand your ground, Agent Fishbone. Rust for the agency. That's what happens when you cooperate with the security services. This is a major double cross. Comfortable, Sir John? Comfortable? Who cares if he's comfortable? He's a crook. You're off duty now, Karsten. Now they're deliberately letting Babistock go. If we'd have known all about this, Gerald and me would have quit. Diamonds or no diamonds. As it turned out, 
It's just as well we stayed. I hope the bank's open this time. It's 10 o'clock. How can it be closed? We have to get into the bank. It's a matter of life and death. Do you know where the manager is? Mr. Robsby over there. <laughs> Sir, it'll only take a minute. I'm Mrs. Hickler, and this is my daughter, Florence. Better be quicker to walk. Sir John was here last Wednesday. We were closed. He's been phoning me. He never stops. What did he want? Your husband's depository, madam. Open for one special customer, all of a sudden there's a rush. If the telephone number of the non-existent shop is the combination, it's 136 clockwise, 34 counterclockwise, 12 clockwise. Try 136 counterclockwise. We you know. The CIA trains us in shoe recognition. That's it. We found it. We've got it. Where are the pens? Well, it's safe as empty. See for yourself. Large, well done, two bone steak. Uh, 16 ounce, yeah. Mm -hmm. Double fried potatoes and double mushrooms. And a couple of good bottles of red wine. Sure you don't want anything? Make up for all that bird seed I had on the train. Thank you. Agent Fleming. Where the hell were you? Daryl, you won't believe you me. You abandoned lucky. your post. Three people died, 68 were poisoned. But I got the risk. Get up to those dumb con men and hold their hands. You better shape up, Miss Fleming. Your future in the agency depends on it. All right, Agent Quinn. Give it a rest. Huh? Gerald, will you get that? It'll be my lunch. I'm trying to get this skirt on. Look ridiculous. Orders from those idiots in the security service. They want us to look part of the action. Guess what? Babistock escape. These are the real fusion plans. Ah, at last. That's my lunch. Oh, this looks very nice. Now for some real food. Haggis. I ordered steak. Where's the clock? Everybody down! We got the message. They want to kill us. What's happened? I think we should change caterers. They're safe and not staff. He looks better than I feel. They're on their way. Hey, good luck, guys. You look terrific. I don't know what I'm more worried about, being gunned down or updrafted. If we had any sense, we'd go straight to the airport. Agency wouldn't like that, fellas. <laughs> you just do your job. Do our job? We should never have joined, Gerald. Where are Babistock and Hitler? That's what I want to know. I think it must be in here. They're just entering Sector 6. Over and out. Up the stairs, third on the left.
just like home. Well, let's get it over with. Where are they then? Let's get on with it. The down payment. If we could now have your final bids. To you, sir, at $150 million. When we receive the rest of the money, We'll tell you where the plans are. When I receive the plans, I will tell you where the money is. Forget it. Look, you bring the money, and I'll bring the plans. I have a better idea. Here, don't mess about. You'll never get away with it, Sydney. Sydney! I think he will get away with it. Don't you, Dad? I'll have my rubies, please. Don't worry, shrimp. The plans are in the village bank. Tomorrow, you will receive details on how to retrieve them. Come on, John. Get a move on. Back up! We must get the jewels. Sid, this is not a dance match. There's $130 million worth of diamonds down there. We can't have those two scientists pitch our diamonds, right? Where do you think they've gone, Gerald? You guys just came out. Which way did we go? I think we just blew it. They're on the run, sir. <laughs> Come on, then. Let's go. Let me buy you a drink, fella. Those limeys are after us. We'll shake them off then. There they are, Sydney. <laughs> oh. Oh. Come on, Sydney, stop clowning. Come on, we can get to the roof here. Great idea, Sydney. Sydney, they'll be down here. Isn't that your girlfriend, Joe? We've lost them, Gerald. Oh, we've lost our diamonds. Oh, the romance is going on of our marriage. If that's just one of the compensations of old age. Because I'm not. You missed, you idiot. That was meant for us. Hey, guys, buy a drink. Let's split up. I'll go this way. I always wanted a farm. Oh, me too. I love pigs. <laughs> it's bigger. You! You! Got you? He went down there! I'm not gonna fall for that old trick. Oh, for heaven's sake! I'll show you. <laughs> Could Hickler do that? Why should he? He's a vegetarian. I almost caught Hickler. Yeah, I think we're in there. Keep going, Dan. I think we've lost him. There they are. They're onto us. Ah! Sit. We look so much like them, and they look so much like us. Even I had trouble when I knew who I was. There go Babistock and Hitler. And here come Gerald and me trying to catch up. We'll never find them in all this, Gerald. Keep looking, Sid. Ah! Oh, 
idea. We're going, Jolene. Just let me check the map. What good is that? You told me this was London. <sighs> I never was much good at running. Baverstock and Hitler kept quite a few steps ahead. What are they fighting about? They're crazy, these guys. Ah! Oh, come on. At least stop messing around. We've lost him, Sid. Well well there they are. The Come on, catch him up. He has a distance of nine feet and ah. he's whirling there. Ah. Round, round, and round, and oh, look, the hammer's ah. going right over the crowd there. <laughs> Here. Do you see what I see, Daniel? Transport. A ticket to Switzerland. Terrific. We got it. Hey, you, that's my car. Hey, come back. Come back, you, that's my car. Come on. They're not going to get away with our jewels, Gerald. Put your arms around me. Just don't get any funny ideas, Sidney. Are you sure you can drive this thing? What? Be careful. Come on, Flo. Thank you. Come on, let's get one from the top of the bell tower. It doesn't look like Switzerland to me. I shouldn't have listened to you. You're a foreigner. I should have turned right back there. Tell us, is this the way to London? Is that round here? Ah! I went to London 50 years ago. It's that way. More or less. Are you okay? What happened? We're okay. Oh. A thousand to one chance. Run for it! Okay. Back off, you assholes. I must tell you, my friend is a black belt master of seven oriental killing arts. You two, disappear. Hold on. He's a moron. I should never listen to him. This must be a first for you, Gerald. What must? The first job you ever did where you didn't crush your partner. Must be losing my touch. I was knighted by the Queen. Here's your reward, boys. I suppose you think you're clever. Tickets. Get you back to London. What about our diamonds? There's a problem. Problem? We checked. The diamonds from the last auction were fake. Uh, those are your diamonds. You promised us the ones we nicked from the deposit boxes. I'm afraid we have to keep those. 
Expensive operation. Still, we guarantee you immunity from prosecution. You can keep the kilt. <laughs> okay, Agent Fleming. Come on, we're pulling out of here. The boat's waiting. Sorry, Mom. See you soon. We've still got one hell of a problem. Daryl! We've got two scientists we dare not put on trial because the publicity would make us look like idiots. And two unimportant con men who were meant to be killed so that we could bury them as Bavistock and Hitler. So we can dispose of the two real scientists quietly after the glorious tributes at their funeral have died down. Trying to say something, Miss Lane? Nothing. I uh, forgot something. See you later. Forget her. We don't need her anymore. Those are not nice people. All we had was a ticket home. Things could only get better. And they did. Here. I've had it with the agency. She's offering you the real plans. So, John, I think we can make a buck or two after all. <laughs> <laughs> At last, luck had come our way. We had the real fusion plans. Being patriotic, the first people we offered them to was the British government. They agreed to cough up all the diamonds they said we could keep, plus a whole lot more. Mind you, they weren't too happy about it. I hope you're not anticipating speedy promotion, Holden. Quite frankly, this is the worst fuck-up I've seen in my 43 years in the service. <clears throat> the wig's holding up well then, Gerald. They're here, sir. So it should. Young lady seems like it. Young ladies, I never saw you with them. As agreed for your services to the nation, Mr. Lipton and Mr. Bradley Scott. Ten million pounds worth, I assure you. Right. Worth a try, sir. We've done it! Great! Bullseye! You see? I could have sworn she was my daughter. <laughs> After all that, Flo went to live in New Mexico. She makes jewelry. Willie married a senator from the Midwest. Gerald and me, we ended up in Barbados. Bavistock and Hitler got what they deserved. They went to jail. And three years later, the fusion plant, based on their plans, was ready for its official opening. Today, Great Britain reveals to the world the first full-scale nuclear fusion power facility. And in a few seconds, the Prime Minister will usher in a new era of cheap, clean energy, thanks to British... Sit down! John, can you do a Cockney accent? Why? Well, you could play me. What happened to me and my mate Gerald, it'd make a great movie. Sydney, we're on! He's calling you. Stay there. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, Zoe. Come on. What's the area code? 371. 371. 371. Ah. Forward to the 21st century. I have the greatest pleasure in declaring... Didn't even mention our names. ...to international cooperation. <laughs> for more weeks. No, I'm sorry, you can't have your money back. We've spent it. <laughs> they say everyone in the world has someone somewhere who looks just like they do. It was my bad luck that I met a man on the beach in Barbados who looked just like that movie star, John Cleese. We gave him the cash to make a film of our story and he turned out to be a con man who ran off with all of our money. Just shows you can't trust anyone. I trusted you. And I got you the money. You went and lost it. You got it? You were stealing luggage from outside hotels. Sydney, we are broke. So? We've been broke before.
What did they say? Viacom.